Hi there and welcome or welcome back to my channel. My name is Mia and I am the maker behind Knit and Grace. And so today I am going to bring you the April podcast or everything that I made in April. Um, as always, I'm filming kind of before work, so hopefully the lighting cooperates. Um, and yeah, I, I guess I should address also for anyone who does follow the channel. Um, unfortunately, I didn't put out a second video in April. Um, and life has just been a bit crazy recently. So um, between work and personal life, things got a little bit a hand and so there's actually some transitions happening at work um, which are kind of in the works right now also which are making things a little bit more hectic than normal so I did want to address that there wasn't a second video in April um, but yeah I am coming to you today is April 29th um, and I am going to walk you through my FOs, whips, acquisitions as well as my knitting plans for May, which um, we'll see. I think they might be a little, um, what's the word I'm looking for? It might be a, I might be like biting off a little bit more than I can chew with my planned makes. But um, in terms of what I'm wearing today, I am wearing my Carbeth. Um, which I'll insert a picture of me wearing the sweater here and I knit this in um, Lion Brand Hue and Me and I don't recall what size I used all right what size I made but I did make some modifications to the pattern um, just to get the right fit um, for instance I do recall um, I knit the body to the measurements of the one of the larger sizes and then I shortened the sleeves um, but with regard to the increases everything oh I made the fifth size that's the size I made I made the fifth size um, and I made this on US 9 needles I want to say no US 10 needles for the body US 9 for all of the ribbing so I love this sweater and I'm actually I think I've mentioned in the podcast before but I'm actually on the lookout for yarn to make another one because I love it so much and I wear it so much so um, jumping right in so that this episode isn't super crazy long um, this month was a bit crazy. I think I mentioned in my last podcast that I had two test knits that I was planning on working on this month. And actually, I completely forgot that I had signed up for a third one. <laughs> so it was a lot. Um, but the third test knit, which is the first thing that I'll show you today, um, and the first thing that I finished in the month, was actually for a hat. So I was really confident that I could like whip it out very quickly, which I did. I whip it I think I made it in like two days and um, specifically because I wanted to use stash yarn so I wanted to use up my leftovers in my stash so this is the Belfair hat by Fine Fiber Co and it's just a nice color work hat a beanie um, it has a deep rib um, so I'll show you that. So it has a nice deep rib that you just fold back and then it is pretty roomy in the beanie itself so it, you have a little bit of room. Um, I'll insert a picture here of my mom wearing this. Uh, she modeled it for me since I'm currently sporting my natural hair. Wearing a hat is a bit difficult. Um, so she modeled it for me and yeah I love this pattern. I will say when testing um, part of it was definitely, uh, there were some gauge issues when testing, which we all have addressed with, um, the designers. Um, part of it, I think, is that I'm a continental knitter, they're English, um, so there's always a bit of tightness, um, difference, you know, the gauge is different, but I usually don't find that I have to go down too, too much, um, but for this pattern, I think that the they call for worsted weight yarn because they used um, wool for wool folk 
Far, um, I think is how you pronounce it, which is a chain net yarn. So that also lends itself to being pulled a lot, um, which I think was the biggest problem because I also had some, I was like, I was just not getting engaged when I was holding, uh, Plo, oh, I used Plotulopi for this. When I was um, knitting it with Plotulopi, I just couldn't get gauge on it double. I was just like, and then going down too far needle size obviously is uncomfortable. And then I was like, okay, well, what yarn did they use? And then I realized that they used that yarn, um, which I had some um, just leftovers of from when I made um, my base slipover for um, um, Jacqueline C. Slack. Um, and so I had some left over and so I wanted to make a gauge swatch just to see, you know, how much of a gauge difference I could get and the gauge for this pattern is 28 stitches and the tightest I can get it to go with it still being comfortable is 22 stitches. And also when you're looking at, um, I forget the name of it, but it's like the, um, like the craft council or yarn council or whatnot. A 28 stitch gauge really is what I think of fingering weight. Um, so I actually ended up getting gauge with Plotulopi held single. So I still was able to, you know, follow my plan of using the Plotulopi. Um, part of it was I didn't want to buy more yarn. Um, and when I signed up for this pattern, I signed up for it, um, because it was a worsted weight pattern and I knew that I had worsted weight yarn in my stash and I wanted to use it up. Um, and then when I saw the gauge difference, I was like, holy moly, like that is a lot. Um, and so, yeah, and I really didn't want to go out and buy any wool folk. Um, I love their yarns, don't get me wrong, but I think $80 for a hat is a lot um so i made it work and i actually ended up getting engaged and i love the way it turned out with the plotulopi held single so um again this is the belfair hat and so i made in plotulopi the main color is 1038 ivory beige and then contrast color one is let me look at my notes here because it's the black color so it's uh, 1033 black and then the brown color is 1032 uh, chocolate heather so these were all leftovers that I had from making my Aido wrap um, and I still have tons of leftovers so I actually cast it on another hat um, using some of this yarn which I'll show you in the whips portion but moving along to my second FO, and this one is not blocked yet because I wanted to show it on the podcast, um, but I will be posting about this one soon, hopefully, on Instagram, so you'll be able to see a worn shot of this one. But this is my test knit for Melissa George of um, Homebody Fibers, and this is the Pretty Basic Ruffle Raglan. And this is what it looks like. I feel like I'm very close to the camera today. I should probably back up a little bit. And also turn off my <laughs> air purifier that I didn't realize was still on. So here we go. This is what it looks like. It has a ruffle around on along the raglan um, seams, which is really fun. You essentially knit the entire um, top and then you pick up the uh, stitches to make the ruffle and this was knit in Knit Picks palette in the color Victorian. I made the fifth size um, and I will link to my um, my Ravelry page for all the details on this one but I used I believe it was size 8 US 8 for the body and then um, there's a combination of different needles I think six for the ribbing and then seven for the ruffles um, but I will put the specifics in my Ravelry page and of course if Ravelry is not accessible to you please don't hesitate to reach out and I can give you the details but um, I made the fifth size of this one and I didn't make any modifications. So I need to submit my tester notes. So that's my plan today. Actually this afternoon, once I sign off of work, I need to submit my test notes for the two tests. Um, 
that I had going because I already finished my notes for the hat. So those are my FOs. Not too many FOs this month, but I actually have two almost FO whips um, that will likely be FOs as of tomorrow. Um, and that is my goal is to finish both of these tomorrow. Um, but because of how long it takes for these podcasts to upload, I wanted to make sure that I record it with enough time. So um, hopefully my hope is, like my aim is always to have these up on Sundays but recently it's been posting more on Mondays so whenever you're seeing this um, these will also be done so I'll start with the hat because I just mentioned that um, so this is a hat that I'm making for my husband and this is in the more of the Plotulopi in the black and the chocolate heather. And this is the Asnes um, hat by Paola LeMay of um, Hoho Trico or Dojo Trico. Um, and so this is a pattern that I test knit for her, I think one or two podcasts ago so you would have seen my version that I um, held together the ivory beige with the white that I had left over um, and so since I had just finished the Belfair hat and I had you know these two colors out and my husband had actually asked me for um, a version of this specific hat when I was knitting mine up um, I figured I would cast it on um, as my train knitting and so this hat is actually knit inside out and then the you turn it right side out um, this is the right side so the side with like the more rib definition so I'm just holding these two colors doubled it's creating a really nice marl effect I'm not sure let's see how well it's showing up there we go and so I'm making this in the men's size um, I took this with our with us or with me on our recent trip to the Catskills um, and I would have finished it while we were there but unfortunately um, I didn't ball up enough yarn because I just balled it up holding holding it already double um, so I just have like two more centimeters to go and then the decreases so this will you know be done tonight um so that is my first whip my second whip which will also be done by tomorrow is my third test knit for the month and um so technically the test knit itself is finished because we only needed to finish the body as well as one of the sleeves. So technically I can submit and I will submit my notes um, tonight. And one of my cats was she loves to knead and I didn't realize that she was kneading right next to my sweater and she caught a little bit of it. So I need to get a crochet hook and pull that back in. But um where was I with this this is my third knit test knit of the month again this will be done by tomorrow although the test knit itself is already technically done since I've fulfilled my obligations as a tester um I'm just going to submit my notes today so that just in case you know anything goes awry with my finishing of the second sleep tomorrow I'm not holding that process up um but this is the Vildness um, sweater for Fiber Tails, and this is what it looks like. And this is a circular, circular yoke sweater, and it has this lovely detail in the yoke here. So it has some cabled stitches, some herringbone stitches, um, and some wrap stitches. And then the rest of the body is just plain stuck in it. So I've already finished here. This was my stitch marker that I placed um, for the beginning of the sleeve to measure. Um, so I'll be able to finish the second sleeve between today and tomorrow. And then this will be turn into another FL. So it'll be interesting because I've I filmed these podcasts and then I post my... Um, 
um, when I made this month post on Instagram usually after so by the time that I post my what I made this month both of these will also be FOs but as of the filming of this podcast they are not um, so oh I didn't talk about the yarn this is also Knit Picks palette the color is Wheat Heather um, this I got gauge on the needle size that um, Lyrica recommends, which is US 4, um, and then it uses a combination of different um, needle sizes depending on the section that you are knitting. So um, I don't have the final counts for this one yet, um, but I will be finding that out shortly. So I'm really excited. This is like a really lightweight sweater. And we've been having really crazy weather here where it's like really warm or um, kind of coolish. So I think that this is going to be a perfect transition sweater because it is, it's fingering weight. It's light, very lightweight, um, but it's still 100% wool. So I think that it's going to be a perfect transitioning piece, um, transition piece for this current weather that we are having. So I'm really excited to finish this. Um, I'll talk to you my Stockholm sweater next. And actually, before I do that, I need to take a sip of something. Oh, I have some fruit flies in my Gatorade, so I will not be taking a sip of that. Um, this week has been a little crazy at work, so I have been a little dehydrated and I usually like to have noon tablets for electrolytes but we're all out so I just like really strongly dilute Gatorade because it's way too sweet for me so I'll have to fish those out later and <laughs> continue drinking that so for now I'll take some of my coffee and that's life so I feel like I'm talking very quickly today and I apologize if I am. So if you follow me on Instagram, you're probably sick of seeing my Stockholm sweater, but I am so loving this. Um, partway through this month, as I mentioned, it was, it was a really difficult month. Um, just a lot going on, um, personal life, but also work-wise. And I think that I was just really struggling this month also with my mental health. So at some point I was just like sitting down and I needed not only to cast on something new but to cast on something just completely completely soothing and that's when I cast on the Stockholm sweater which I did mention in my last podcast so um yeah so I think I had mentioned that I was probably gonna either cast this one on or the anchor sweater and ultimately it's just been so cool that I've just decided to continue using um, casting on my woolly knits um, before it gets too warm to knit them anymore so I have cast this on in Newtiden held double with Barocco Ariel and this is what it looks like and I've finished the body I just have the sleeves to go so I did the neck detailing and then this is the body. The only thing that I regret is I feel like um, based on the pattern you want to go down two needle sizes. Whew, I have fluff over here for your ribbing, um, it, which I did. So I'm using US 5s for the body and then um, the so I went two down to US three for the bottom ribbing, but I feel like I should have gone down to a three three millimeter. So US three is a three point two five, um, and the reason I say that is because she actually has you use um, oh and this is the Stockholm sweater by Petite Knit, which I'm sure you all know that that but um, yeah so she has you use. A three millimeter for the neck ribbing actually which I did do um, and of course this also has elastic in there um, but the ribbing is much neater and tighter as compared to this ribbing 
So I'm hoping some of that will be taken care of and blocking once it blooms because this combo did bloom a lot. Um, and then also like smush the ribbing a bit. Um, otherwise, if it doesn't look right, I might just re-block the knitting, the ribbing and just have it be straight down. Um, but that's what it's looking like. So I just have to pick up for the sleeves and knit the two sleeves. And this has been such a comfort knit. I mean, this combination is luxurious. It's absolutely beautiful. Um, between the new to din, which really forces you to slow down um, and enjoy sort of the moment. And then the aerial, which is giving it that extra fluff, that extra stability. And it's also giving it a little bit of a shine. So I'll hold up, um, I'll show you what the balls look like separate. So this is Nutigen and Harden, which means hearth. And this is uh, Barocco Ariel in copper. So you see they're actually quite different colors. This is a lot more yellow, this is a lot more red. So this is what they look like separately versus what the knitted fabric brick looks up. Um, let's see if I can get the lighting right. Oh yeah, that's pretty good. So you see it, it kind of, it definitely, the copper definitely mutes the harden just a tiny, tiny bit, teeny tiny bit without taking away from the beautifulness of the yarn like I mean you can still see the you know like the browns in here the reds the purples like you can still I'm not sure how well that's gonna show up but you can still see all of like the color this texture um but then it does mute it down just a tiny tiny bit so yeah so that has been a really comfort knit of mine this month and I did temporarily put it down put it down just so I can finish my buildness um, and then I will be picking it back up so I can finish the sleeves um, so those are my three whips that I had this month um, and I'm going to show you all a fourth whip which is really kind of a UFO and I'm going to be bringing it back out, which is going to lead me into um, my May plans. I'm trying to think how I'm going to do this because also some of my May plans have to do with my acquisitions as well. Um, so I'll show you that one first. I'll speak to that one and then um, I'll go through the acquisitions and the rest of my May plans. Okay, so as I was finishing up that ramp, my uh, camera flashed at me that it was time to change the battery, so I went ahead and did that. Um, perfect timing. And so I'm going to show you this whip, which is a UFO. Um, and so this is the Amara sweater by Rachel of Rachel Knits Things. And um, I believe I have shown this on the podcast before. Um, this was supposed to be a test knit for her, um, but I unfortunately was unable to finish it. And this is actually the only test knit that I've ever not finished. Um, so yeah, I think just while I was knitting this, I got a lot done and then life got in the way and I really wasn't able to pick up the needles. Um, just, I was dealing with a lot health wise at the end of last year, beginning of this year. Um, and so I wasn't able to finish this knit. So I have left the neck and and then the two sleeves and then this is just a really pretty pullover sweater it has a little bit of a, a split hem detail in the back um, and I was knitting this using Barocco Ariel in the copper colorway held triple 
um, which is why actually when I was looking at different yarns to hold double with the Newton for my Stockholm sweater, I already had it in the stash, so I, I did a gauge swatch to see how it would look, and it kind of was just like a happy accident that it worked perfectly. Um, so yeah, back to the Amara sweater. This is by Rachel or Rachel Knits Things. Um, so my plan is for this month to pick this back up and to finish it. And so again, while the weather is still cool enough for me to be uh, working with mohair held triple. Um, and part of the reason for that is that I actually, part of the, re part of the reason that I had not, was not able to finish the test knit was also the fact that I didn't order enough yarn. So um, I did need to order more yarn, which I never got around to. And so then since um, I was needing more yarn for this project as well as for the Stockholm uh, sweater, I actually went ahead and ordered enough Barocco Ariel for both projects. So like the, I think I was missing one skein for, yeah, I was missing one skein for the Amara sweater and then I needed to buy five skeins for the Stockholm sweater. So I went ahead and bought that all together while I was doing placing that order on webs. Um, and so I'm going to pick this back up um, just because I'm trying to knit yarn pretty quickly as I buy it um, or only purchase yarn for things that I actually need to knit right now with the exception of the new to den shop update which is happening on May 1st for patrons <laughs> which is a whole other thing but new to den doesn't count um as I can confirm after speaking with CC <laughs> of um stitch with stitch witchcraft um or stitch witch knits I'm so sorry I'll put her proper Instagram handle here um but yeah, so try not to get too much more coming in, and I will probably be having a de-stash sale at some point, but I wanted to knit this, A, because I just ordered the rest of the yarn that I needed to finish this, and I, I'm just so close. I just need to, again, knit the sleeves and the neckband, um, but also because I wanted to take part in Amy Schur's, um Knit Diverse uh, make-along. And so I thought that this was a perfect time for me to finally finish this project um, and really give it the tender loving care that it needs. And I think that, you know, um, I'm sort of using the make along as a kick in the butt to go ahead and get this beautiful, beautiful sweater out of UFO status and into my finished objects pile. So that's a little bit of my May plans for you and also I'll show you um I mean I just showed you the one um leftover Ariel but I did buy some Ariel again in that copper colorway let's see if it'll focus there we go um from web so this was one of my acquisitions um for the month of April but again it was yarn that was acquired to immediately make one project and finish another one. So it was acquired and it's going to immediately go out. Um, so yes, yeah, so I've covered FOs, whips. My first acquisition, I'm like, my pile is growing around me. Um, my second acquisition for the month is another mohair that I actually got for also another project that I'm planning on making um, and yeah so I'll show you that I did no ball band on this one since I did start knitting with it but this is Rowan Kid Silk Haze in the pearl colorway so it's just a really beautiful Um, like pearlescent pinkish purplish gray 
Um, and the intention for this is to be held double with Plotulopi. Whoop. There are some strands going on there. I have tons of the ivory beige in my stash, so I wanted to knit it up. And so the ivory beige is definitely a very beige. And this is definitely, so you can see, I think that helps you, yeah, you can actually see the purples in there when holding it up next to it. Um, and the ivory beige is a beautiful color on its own, but I wanted to give it a little something extra. So I got two of this. And ultimately, I'll show you what the swatch looks like. This is going to be a ranunculus. So I'm finally jumping on the ranunculus bandwagon. Um, this is a fully blocked swatch. I made the swatch on size US size 10s, which is what the pattern calls for. And my gauge is a bit smaller than the pattern, so I'm definitely gonna, but I like, I like how it looks. It's just airy enough that I can wear just a little tank top underneath, but not see through. Um, and so the plan for me is to make the short sleeve version and I'm gonna add some ribbing to the sleeves. So um, that is going to potentially be my second make for May that would be an entry into the Knit Diverse make along. Um, and so I thought that, you know, because of the Knit Diverse make along, um, and I have been eyeing the ranunculus for a while, um, I thought, why not? And I have the yarn in my stash, and again, I only bought enough mohair. Like when I did the um, calculations for the size that I would be making, it's exactly the two balls of the kids' silk case. Um, so it's coming in, going out, um, immediately being knit up. And um, I'm actually part of a Discord group for um, Alex of the Ancestral Craft podcast. And um, Alex herself has made the ranunculus holding a mohair doubled. And then one of um, the other lovely ladies um, in that group, um, Antha, she um, has made the ranunculus just in Plotulopi in the ivory beige so we were all kind of going back and forth when I was like trying to figure out if I wanted to just do the plotulopi on its own or um, if I wanted to hold a double with um, a mohair sort of going back and forth and what I should do and ultimately I decided to hold a double with the mohair just to give it a little bit a little bit more of a softness um, factor because Plotulopi is pretty rustic and because I am knitting the short sleeve version um, I really would only be able to wear a tank top underneath um, so I wanted to make sure that I could um, sort of get rid of a little bit of that itch factor. So that was my second acquisition for the month. Um, third acquisition, this month was definitely not big on acquisitions. Again, I'm trying to knit down my stash. Um, I know you're all like, well, you're buying yarn, but this is actually, um, yarn that I purchased. Was this in April? No, this was March. So this was Woolen Twine's March update. So technically I purchased it in March. It just didn't come until April because it is an international shipping situation. Um, but this is the limited edition number five yarn for Woolen Twine. And it is a DK weight. It is 80% Scotch Mule, 20% Gotland. And it is in the colorway Coral. So that is this color. And as you can see, it is so beautiful. And when Eula was previewing this limited edition, so I, I think if you follow me on Instagram, you kind of will know. I saw the I saw that Eula was going to put out a shop update and that it had a limited edition. And I was like, no, my budget really cannot take it, especially because I had just placed a really big. Um, order for Nutigen, which you all saw in the last podcast. 
Um, but of course, I needed some podcasts to watch one day while I was knitting, and I decided to queue up the limited edition podcast. Eula um, puts out these beautiful podcasts um, whenever she has a shop update, not only showing um, the colors for that update, but also going over um, the limited edition yarns and like what makes them special and what patterns she recommends. And as soon as she showed the project that she made in it, um, which I forgot which sweater pattern it was, but it's just a beautiful cardigan that she made. And I saw the drape and I saw the colors and I knew it was a DK weight yarn. I immediately thought of the Ava Pullover by Melody Hoffman of Bee Mandarines. And sure enough, when Eula got to her pattern suggestion section of her podcast, she mentioned the Ava Pullover. So I was like, how am I going to make this work? I mean, there was just no way we were going to make it work. Um, we just had some car issues and I had put some money into the car and I was just like, well, I'm just going to have to miss out. Um, but I think the shop update was like on a Friday and like on Tuesday, I got to, it was like Tuesday or Wednesday right before I got to the mailbox and I'd received my sample knitting check for making the sample for Barocco that I talked about, I want to say two podcasts ago, um, or maybe last podcast. So I received my sample knitting check as well as a check from our new car that we received uh, or that we bought. Um, I guess we overpaid the registration fee and so the dealership was returning um, the, the overpayment to us. And I was like, oh my God, I think I can make this work. And I did the math and I knew that I needed. So the pattern for the size that I intend to make calls for five of the woolly mammoth fiber. And this yarn is slightly, it has slightly more meterage than the average DK. So it's 275 meters per 100 grams as opposed to 240. Um, but what I did, so technically I could have gotten just four, but just because this is a limited edition yarn and I didn't want to chance anything, I did go ahead and get got the five um, of this. And then if I end up with an extra one, I'll, I'll like make a hat or do a color work or something. Or, you know, I have the BFL DK that I got from her last time, which I think that would make like a really nice sort of um, low contrast color work. So, um, so yeah, so I just got the five and I did the math on that and I had enough to get the five. And I think after shipping and everything, I think I had like 10 or $20 left over. So I was like, this is perfect. Um, so yeah, I got really nice yarn and then this is actually going to be the third project that I plan on starting in May and I'm going to start this as part of Cece's um, I forget what she's calling it um, her make along um, where it's essentially just exploring natural dyes. So whether you are exploring dyeing yarn naturally yourself or working with naturally dyed yarns, um, and it's a make along. So you can dye, you can weave, knit, crochet, whatever it might be. And I'll, I'll insert the hashtag here that she has. Um, but essentially she's starting the make along on May 15th, which is the full moon. And so that is when I plan on casting on the Ava pullover and as part of the make along. And so I'm going to gauge swatch hopefully this weekend um, for that to make sure that I have everything ready to go for May 15th. So acquisitions and May plans. Um, so yeah, so I plan on making the Ava pullover um, or starting the Ava pullover, it's definitely not going to be finished. 
starting the ranunculus definitely also not going to be finished and then um finishing both my stockholm sweater and my amara sweaters so a lot going on in may we'll see i might have bitten off a little bit more than i could chew but even the work has been quite crazy so i feel like on the days that i go into the office i'm pretty tired um i actually do get a lot of knitting time on the train because it's just like an hour that i'm really forced to not be able, i can't do anything else so i'm really forced to just focus and i knit where sometimes i get home or even at the end of a work day when i'm working from home because i'm on a hybrid schedule i'm just so tired at the end of the day that i just kind of veg out in front of the tv but um when i'm on the train you know i like to be vigilant and aware of my surroundings so it's definitely a time that i can just focus on getting knitting done so um obviously i'm also planning on pretty large projects so not a lot of this can be get can get done on the train after a certain point so like the two projects that have sleeves going on those i can't knit on the train anymore um once i probably start the ranunculus and start the ava i'll be able to start those on the train um before they get too big so i might have like a sock project or something like that that i have going for my train knitting um in the meantime um as usual these podcasts are getting pretty long so i'm going to try to wrap it up um i have one more acquisition which is knitting related but is not a knitting project and it is this wrist ruler by crossover industries it actually came in this really nice tin and i'll link the etsy shop below um but it's actually this ruler that i'm wearing on my wrist it's a bracelet and so this is a double wrap and the way that you do it is you measure your wrist and then you allow for a little bit extra to for the ruler to be able to you know so the bracelet's not too tight so i got the 15 inch um and so this is what it looks like it has um i'm not sure let's see there we go it has both centimeters and inches and again this is 15 inches so that's 38 centimeters um and yeah i got this actually specifically because of commuting um i had seen one of the ladies at my local yarn shop they had carried a similar brand and i forget what it was but they, they weren't carrying it anymore um and i had seen her wearing one a very very long time ago and i just hadn't picked one up and then now with commuting and i have to carry so much more stuff now um you know because sometimes i have laptops or things like that um when i'm commuting into the office um i wanted to keep my knitting um accessories that i need to carry with me to a minimum and so i thought that this was really cool because it's it is a bracelet and most people just think it's a bracelet but it's actually a ruler and so when i take it off i can measure my progress on my projects um so that was another um knitting related acquisition so let me check my list um as always i have i sort of plan everything out beforehand um that pretty much covers it all um i guess the last thing that i want to talk about um that i for completely forgot to mention in my last podcast is um the lovely lovely uh wool and berries melanie uh we've become very friendly on instagram and i feel like we have a very similar aesthetic and we've been making a lot of the same projects and i'm just like maybe one day i will go to germany and i will be able to meet her in person um but she actually is so kindly uh gave me a shout out on instagram last month um so in march um and i did get a quite a few new followers from her shout out so i wanted to give her a thank you um also i think all of you all um i think i mentioned in my last podcast i was so close to 500 and now i'm like 
at like 520 subscribers. Um, also, my Instagram has increased quite a bit, so I'm over 500 followers there as well. So I'm really excited. I hope that you all are enjoying these little podcasts and these little videos that I put out and my content over on Instagram, although I know sometimes it can be a little sporadic, um, but welcome. And I hope that, you know, you enjoy this lovely little space of mine that I am creating here on my channel um, or that you think it's lovely as well I think so um, or I like to think so anyway but yeah just a, a huge thank you to everyone um, thank you for commenting and liking um, videos and all of that jazz um, so I'll go ahead and wrap this up um, again these are all my April makes I'll probably have two more FOs by the time that this is live um, the Belfair hat will be live by the time this video is out because it is released tomorrow April 30th when I'm filming this um, so that will be linked below and then the Vildenis sweater hopefully I'm not sure when Lyrica plans to release it but um, I will give you all an update once that's finished and when she releases that as well um, I hope you're all well I do have an actual second video that's going out in May um, and that is going to be a sewing related video so I'm going to do um, similar to my top knitting patterns i'm actually going to do some sewing patterns for the spring and summer um especially now for me personally i tend to transition more to sewing um as the summer months come along because i do like some um summer knitting but i'm not a huge huge summer knitter so like actually my tenya is right behind me here that i knit in barocco remix light so i do have some summer knitting um plans um so i mentioned my anchor but for the most part i really in the summer knit a lot of socks <laughs> um to be completely honest and then just really do a lot of sewing so you may see a little bit more sewing content from me over the next few months um i can't promise a third video this month but i may try to shoot for one um but definitely you'll be getting a second video because i've already have that planned out and I will be filming that this weekend while this video hopefully buffers. Um, I don't know if it's my internet or my videos are so large. It takes a while for YouTube to uh, clear my videos. So um, that is all I have for you all today. I hope you're all happy and healthy. Um, enjoying the spring weather um, wherever you might be. If you're in the northern hemisphere or the fall weather. If you're in the southern hemisphere. Um, and I will see you in the next one. Bye.